if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the Spirit of God rests upon you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to everyone, If anyone wishes to come after me, you must deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world yet lose or forfeit yourself. Whoever is ashamed of me, of my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory, in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's important sometimes to situate ourselves in the reality of the world, our relationship to the world, and alongside the scriptures and the stories of our faith. Today we have the story of a woman, fourth century, from Catania, Sicily. She was a noble woman, so she had some money, and it was during the persecutions of the, the emperors of Rome, and she was a very attractive woman. So in times of conquest, sometimes the victors think they own the world. She was chosen by one of the Romans to be his wife. However, she was a Christian, he was a pagan, and she wasn't about to give her life to pagan customs, and she was promising her life to Christ. She's a young girl, probably early, maybe teens, late teens. And this was around, like I said, the fourth century, three something. And they took her. They took her into prison because she refused to worship the emperor, marry the, the, the general, and give up her faith. In the course of this time, knowing that she was so attractive, and her beauty attracted people, she, they forced her into slavery. They forced her into imprisonment. Now, you would think that from the 4th century to the 20th, 20th century, that's over. And yet we know, here we are in the 21st century, imprisonment, torture, martyrdom for the faith is still going on in many parts of the world. It, it's, it's heart rendering. That's why you notice I wear red, because those people who are martyred for their faith are witnesses. The word is interchangeable. It's a Greek word, martyr. They're witnesses through blood. Through their blood, they've given themselves over to Christ. Now, today in Catania, Sicily, and I have relatives, a lot of relatives there, um, and throughout Sicily, there's great festivities, and they'll have a procession, and they'll, they'll do wonderful things in honor of St. Agatha of Catania. She was also closely associated and aligned with St. Agnes, another famous saint. The people of Catania honor her as one of their own. So it's in the beginning of the gospel and story, I mentioned Sometimes it's nice for us to align ourselves in the world alongside our faith. So wherever our heritage is from, and mine happens to be from Sicily and Abruzzo, southern Italy. So when I think of St. Agatha, I think of my own heritage. I think of my families. I think of the family members that I met when I was there. I think of my mother's whole side, because they were all there from various cities in, in Sicily. But all of us should do the same. Because we are historical beings. We're part of the world. And as being part of the world, we're situated in the world. However, we have something very different going for us. We are part of God's world. We're part of the family of the church. 
So when we worship a saint, whether she is from Sicily, United States, or another country, we're honoring our sisters and brothers who give worship to God, who, who give God their lives so often through martyrdom. So we celebrate our, and we realize that we're in the world and Jesus Christ so dignified us that he came into the world and was born just like one of us in all things but sin. So Jesus understands us, I think, on a human level, of course, as a divine level as, as well, on a human level as well. So he understands the, the, say, the working mother who has no husband. She understand, he understands those of us who are disabled in any way, emotionally, physically. He understands those who are, of us who are distracted by life and pulled away from our faith. The stories go on. Read the Gospels. We know how much Jesus understands us because he chose to hang out with us, to be one of us, to set up his tent among us. And Agatha, among other saints, was so impressed with Jesus that she married him in her, in her soul, in her spirit. And she held herself only for Jesus. And of course, the intervention of the Romans was negative. They wanted her for themselves. As a woman, the dignity associated with the woman are unique, different than men. So we look at women and the beauty of their bodies. We could look at men and the, the beauty of their bodies too, but we look at women, women today because of Agatha. Her martyrdom was going to the, you might say, the, the most symbolic physical attribute of a woman, her breasts. They were removed as part of her martyrdom. Think of the indignity of that. Think of how low the perpetrators sunk to, to disgrace and hurt and cause to be a, a witness by, by doing this act of tr torture and treachery. Come into the 21st century. It gives us pause to think about the number of women and children and, and many men who were taken into slavery throughout the world and dealt with indignity and martyrdom because they're women and they're taken advantage of so easily, so often. So today's Mass, I'd like to pray for my ancestors in Sicily and wherever they are, but I also want to pray for women who are trafficked, women who, who are being taken advantage of in our own country and internationally. It's something we have to be aware of. We talked about being in the world. They are in the world as victims. And we not only can pray for them, but we elect, we should elect representatives who will fight for their dignity and their freedom. See how the world and the gospel are interchangeable at times? How the world and the gospel can come together? And we are the uniting forces. As Christ became God and man and united both into one person, we unite our faith and our humanity come before God, honoring him, the martyrs, women, and those for whom we pray.